This is part 100 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss custom authorization requirements and handlers. These are very useful and powerful concepts that help us implement even the most complex authorization needs of an application. Now let's take a look at some of the simple authorization policies with just one built-in requirement. As you can see, this policy has one simple requirement which is specified using require claim method. So for this policy to succeed, edit role claim type must be present. And even this policy has just one requirement. For this policy to succeed, edit role claim type must be present with a claim value of true. Even this third policy has just one requirement. The only difference is we have specified multiple claim values that is true and yes. So for this policy to succeed, edit role claim type must be present with a claim value of either true or yes. This policy has two simple built-in requirements. One requirement is specified using require claim method and the other using require role method. For this policy to succeed, the user must be in the admin role and must have edit role claim type with a claim value of either true or yes. All requirements must be met for a policy to succeed when we specify requirements using the fluent syntax by chaining calls to require claim and require role methods like this. There is an AND relationship between these two requirements. Now, if we want to create a policy with an OR relationship between the requirements, we use require assertion method. This method adds the built-in assertion requirement. We discussed require assertion method in detail in our previous video. For this policy to succeed, it's enough if one of these two requirements are met. The user must be in the admin role and has claim type edit role with a value of true or the user must be in the super admin role. All these methods require claim, require role, require assertion adds built-in requirements. Notice when I hover the mouse over require claim method, you can see from the IntelliSense, it adds claims authorization requirement. Similarly, when I hover the mouse over require role, we can see it adds roles authorization requirement. And this require assertion method adds assertion requirement. All these are built-in requirements. If the application that we are building is a simple application, then these built-in requirements would do the job. However, for most applications, we need more than what is offered by these built-in requirements. This is when we create custom authorization requirement. An authorization policy has one or more requirements and each authorization requirement has one or more authorization handlers. All the built-in requirements that these methods have, that is require claim, require role, and require assertion. So for example, require claim adds claims authorization requirement, require assertion adds assertion requirement, and similarly require role adds roles authorization requirement. All these are built-in requirements. These built-in requirements implement this I authorization requirement interface. So the point that I'm trying to make is for us to create a custom authorization requirement, our custom authorization requirement class must also implement this I authorization requirement interface. This is an empty marker interface, which means there's nothing special in this interface that our custom requirement class must implement. It is in the authorization handler that we write our logic to allow or deny access to a resource like a controller action, for example. An authorization handler implements authorization handler of T, where T is the requirement. For example, Let's say an admin user can assign or remove roles of other admin users, but not his own roles. To achieve this, we need to know the logged in user ID and the user ID of the admin being edited. If they are the same, we do not want to allow access. The admin user ID that is being edited is passed in the URL as a query string parameter. From the authorization handler, we will have access to the route data and URL query string parameters. Dependency injection is also supported. This means we can even inject and use other services if required. If this is not entirely clear at the moment, please do not worry. In our next video, we'll implement custom authorization requirements and handlers with an example. And at that point, it should be much clearer. That's it in this video. 
Thank you for listening.